you've messed it up. You're stupid. Today's Daily Dose of Stupid, and this one is a zinger. I'm not going to lie. This is a headline uh, from a couple days ago by the Associated Press. Blurred lines. A pregnant man, yes, I didn't misspeak, a pregnant man's tragedy tests gender notions. So the Associated Press came out with this the other day, and, and just to give you an understanding of how all this went down, they're saying that there is a pregnant man. They're saying that a woman who was born a woman and has all of a woman's parts, they're saying that's a man and she is pregnant. They're saying that this is going to be testing gender norms. So the article starts out when the man arrived at the hospital again, this is a lady. When the man arrived at a hospital with severe abdominal pains, a nurse didn't consider it an emergency noting that he was obese and had stopped taking blood pressure medicines. In reality, he was pregnant, a transgender man in labor that was about to end in a stillbirth. The tragic case described in Wednesday's New England Journey, Journal of Medicine points to larger issues about assigning labels or making assumptions in a society increasingly comfort, uh, confronting gender variations in sports, entertainment, and government. In medicine, there's a similar danger of missing diseases such as sickle cell and cystic fibrosis that largely affect specific racial groups, the author writes. Quote, the point is not what's happened to this particular individual, but is an example of what happens to transgender people interacting with the healthcare system, said the lead author, Dr. Daphna Strom Stromusa of the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor. Quote, he was rightfully classified as a man in the medical records and appears masculine, Strasuma said, but his classification threw us off from considering his actual medical needs. This is non-scientific nonsense. There is nothing about this that is scientific. This person had a female body, fully female, two X chromosomes, been female from birth, giving birth. This is not a new thing. Human beings have been doing this literally since the beginning of time. And so this guy trying to assert, well, he was rightly gendered as a man, but they didn't consider his medical needs. Again, a lady. They didn't consider his medical needs because of these gender norms. It's a female. She misgendered herself on her admission paper or whatever else, told the doctors that she was a man when in fact her body was as female as it can be. And because she appeared to be masculine, in other words, she was dressed like a man, she looked like a man, and because she told the medical staff she was a man, she was treated like a man. That's what's supposed to happen. When I walked in and I had a very gender-specific disease. Keep in mind, I am a survivor of testicular cancer. Ladies don't get testicular cancer. They don't have testiculars. And so I do have a little bit of knowledge in this area because this is something that happened to me. I had a very gender specific disease. Would not have been possible for me to get testicular cancer as a woman because I wouldn't have had the part that gets cancer. And so it's so insanely frustrating and absurd that now we have people that are actual medical doctors saying, oh, they were correctly labeled as a man. They should have referred to themselves as a man. But this thing ended in a stillbirth, and that's wrong because what should have happened is that they should have assumed that pregnancy was a possibility. Are you outside of your ever-loving mind? No. They treated this patient as a man because they were told by the patient, that she was a man when she was not. The, the idea that whatever a person says or whatever they feel or whatever they identify as ought to change what the person... Th there's a reason that the male and female body are different. They're not the same. And there's certain things that affect women and there's certain things that affect men. There's things that affect both as well. But the fact that there is a variation there is something your doctor needs to know. 
if I were to go into a veterinary office and I told them that I was a dog, and let's just say that I had the ability to actually look like a dog, which of course I don't, but if I had told them this, then of course they're going to treat me differently than if I have a human body. Let's not even take the interspecies thing about it. If I told them, and let's say that I had some kind of cosmetic thing to make myself look black, if I told my doctor that I was racially black when I'm not, I'm clearly, I'm whiter than sour cream. I'm about as white as a human being can get. If I go in and tell my doctor that I'm black, he might assume that a problem that I'm having could be sickle cell anemia, which affects certain racial groups differently than it does. But, but according to the left now, I can identify as a different race. Well, if I choose to tell my doctor that I am a race that I am not, I can't be mad at the doctor when he treats me as though I am a member of that race. And the same thing is true here. Because this idiot decided to identify herself as a man and refused to say, hey, by the way, just so you know, my body's actually female, then this resulted in the death of a person and could have been something that was very complicated and medically problematic for her. No amount of feelings. I don't care how you feel. Look, if, if you want to wake up every morning, and even though you're a female, if you want to wake up every morning, put on men's clothes, and act like a man, and talk like a man, and tell other people that you're a man, I think it's stupid, but it's your business. That is totally up to you. I'm very libertarian when it comes to that. Where I have a problem is when you start saying that other people have to treat me that way. And that's exactly what happened. She told people, I am a man, and then got her wish. Because they're saying that when they refer to themselves as whatever gender that they're not, they're saying, okay, well, what we ought to do then is we ought to treat the person as though the gender that they identify as, as if that is their real gender. Yeah, well, that's what happened here. And it's a pretty good example of why that's a really, really dumb idea. These people thought she actually was a man, treated her as though she was a man, and because of that, it resulted in the, the loss of her baby and medical complications for her because she stubbornly held on to her political activism and refused to correctly identify herself as a female. She got what she wanted. They treated her like a man, and it resulted in a real problem for her, and especially for her baby. Now, the article continues on. Several hours later, doc uh, a doctor evaluated him, and the hospital test confirmed a pregnancy. An ultrasound showed unclear signs of a fetal heart activity, and an exam revealed that part of the umbilical cord had slipped into the birth canal. Doctors prepared to do an emergency cesarean delivery, but the operating, uh, but in the operating room, no fetal heartbeat was heard. Moments later, the man delivered a stillborn baby. A woman showed up with similar symptoms, quote, would almost surely have been tra uh, triaged and evaluated more urgently for pregnancy-related problems, the author wrote. Its very upsetting incident and its tragic outcome, Dr. Tamara Wuxler a hormone specialist at NYU Lang uh, Langone Medical Center. Quote, medical training should include exposure to transgender patients so that health workers are better able to meet their needs, Wexler said. A lot of doctors who are practicing didn't have that in their training, but can still learn from patients now. Uh, no, a baby literally died because of this person's political activism. And if it were up to me, they would be charged with criminal negligence. The same way that a parent, ignoring for whatever reason, ignoring the medical needs of their child in a normal circumstance, would have a court bring criminal charges against that person because of negligence, the same thing should happen here. This woman made a choice, a very stupid choice, but a choice, that she was going to identify herself the way that she wanted to regardless of the medical consequences, and the decision ended in the loss of her child. That should be prosecuted as though she is a criminal. That's what should happen here. And by the way, 
There are several occasions where lying on medical forms is an actual crime. And nobody's even bringing that up here. Furthermore, these treatments, what, what they're suggesting is, well, what ought to have happened is they shouldn't have just assumed that the person had a male body just because they told them that they were a man. If that's the case, there is no point in even telling them what gender you are. If that's the case, there is no reason to bring that up on your form, and that is going to result in a loss of time, which is a really important thing in the medical field. And it's also going to result in possibly even lives lost, certainly a decrease in care. Because if you are required by law to treat every single person that walks in your door, regardless of what they have, as though they could or could not be a male or a female, you are going to lose precious, valuable time. You are going to be wasting the time of medical professionals who could be using that time to help other patients because of your idiotic political activism. In my case, for example, I actually, one of the symptoms that I was going through when they found my tumor was abdominal pain. Would it have made any sense for them to do an ultrasound on me to determine whether or not I was pregnant? No. It is medically impos impossible for me to get pregnant. I don't have a uterus. Me telling them that I was a guy helped them more quickly figure out what was wrong with me. That is time that was probably used to help another patient that wasn't wasted on me. Because it would have done no good for them to check for that. And this idea that in the name of political correctness that we should adopt practices that could cause people to lose their lives has shown where the left's priorities really are. They are perfectly comfortable with other people possibly, you know, experiencing medical injury or even losing their own life and wasting time, which, by the way, will also make health care more expensive which is one of the things that the left is supposed to be in favor of bringing down the cost of health care. That would make treatment more expensive because they're wasting time doing a whole bunch of useless procedures on people that can't possibly have the ailments that they would be potentially checking for. That would increase the cost of health care and it would put the lives of other patients at risk. So the idea that this is what should happen is just absolutely stupid. Uh, later on in the article, Nick Ryder is a transgender health specialist and psychologist at the University of Minnesota, said training isn't enough. There are implicit biases that needed to be addressed, Ryder said. Health records may, be, may use male-female templates for gender, but, quote, it doesn't mean that we just throw our critical thinking out or think that humans are diverse, Ryder said. Oh, you want to talk to me about critical thinking? There is no rational person that uses critical thinking on this earth that believes a man can be pregnant. There just isn't. This is anti-scientific nonsense. The reason that we have this template, the reason that we do treat men and women differently, is because their bodies are different. You may not like that, it may not make you feel good, but it's the truth. Sorry, that's the way things are. You can exist in your little fantasy land where anybody can change their gender on a whim, but don't ask the rest of us to sacrifice our health care for, for your ideology and your activism. That's not something that's going to be a starter with me. And furthermore, what really should have happened here is that somebody who is a psychologist should be saying, look, that's something that should be treated psychologically. Whether or not you think transgenderism is good or bad, whether or not you think they should be treated as the gender that they claim to be or not, you should also have the disclaimer, but when it comes to medical procedures, you need to tell them, hey, by the way, genetically, I'm a man, or genetically, I'm a woman. They need to be aware of that stuff because we have different parts. It's just absolutely insane that now they're essentially blaming the doctors. And that's what's so patently absurd about this. What the doctors did is they reacted the way any normal, rational, clear-thinking person would, which is, he looks like a man, or sorry, she looks like a man, and she's telling us that she's a man, therefore we're going to treat her as though she's a man. 
they didn't do anything wrong. They were operating under medical science would suggest that there are males and females. And because of that, they didn't know. They can't be held responsible for knowledge that they didn't have. She decided to tell them, I'm a guy. They treated her as though she was a guy. And complications arose and a child died for this person's political activism. This isn't the fault of the doctors. They were doing what they were supposed to. They were operating under scientific fact, which states that human beings are divided into male and female. They were operating under that assumption, which is the correct assumption. It was the patient that was stupid enough to say, well, I don't care whether I'm a, a female or not. I'm going to tell people that I'm a man, even when my life or the life of somebody else may be forfeit because of that. So no, the doctors didn't do anything wrong. It's this person that did something wrong. And they ought to be criminally charged because of that. Hey, y'all know I'm a stats and numbers guy, so here's some fun facts for you. People that subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel are 200% more satisfied with their online video content and 400% more likely to be able to speak intelligently about politics and religion with somebody they know. Also, four out of five people that subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel live healthier, more fulfilling lives. And that fifth guy was just a social justice warrior with a stick up his butt. Also, 82% of the statistics on the internet totally made up.